Norton is beloved around the world, known for his chat show that sees celebrities sit on his famous red couch to share a wine and some stories. It's no wonder the show's been running for 31 seasons. But what many of you may not know is that Graham is also a successful novelist and he's just released his fifth book. I had the joy of catching up with him to talk about life, his career and the Aussie suburb he once lived in. Graham Norton, what an absolute joy to talk with you virtually, not quite the same as on the couch. It's probably better. Is it? I don't know. I've watched your show and I want to be there, my friend. No, it is good fun. It is good fun. After, what is it, 26, 27 years, it feels so familiar, but at the same time, you don't know what's coming. And that's what kind of keeps it interesting, you know? And, and there is a bit of a pinch me moment that this is my job and I've been lucky enough to do it for a very long time. I don't admit it to everyone on the day because they'd all hate me, but it does make me a little bit emotional. Totes emotion. We both interview people for a living. You're in the evening, I'm in the morning, so we don't quite have the same tools at our disposal. Booze? <laughs> I mean, alcohol. <laughs> I'm thinking of Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, I'm not sure it helped. I'm not sure it helped with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> you can't really get drunk on the show. The most you could drink on my show is like two drinks, maybe three at a push. Yeah. So if you want to be drunk on my show, and clearly some people do, uh, you've got to arrive fairly liquored up. Have there been any shockers aside from Mark? Anyone you've gone, oh, geez, mate, really? I remember Mickey Rourke got out of his car and uh, he was holding a bottle of Jack Daniels when he got out of the car. But even more worrying than that was the bottle of Jack Daniels was half empty. And it, it soon became clear where the where that Jack Daniels had gone. And whenever he thought the camera wasn't on him, right. he would try and smoke a cigarette. And what? so we'd have to stop the show and kind of go, uh, you know, because I, I don't want to be the guy saying, please stop smoking. I'm not an air steward. I mean, I could have been, but I'm not. Uh, so I, uh, and then he had handcuffs for some reason that he was trying to put on me. Yeah, that was a long, a long evening. Oh. oh. So I get to cover put these on him. Now, you've also worked on Eurovision for 17 years, and, of course, Eurovision has a very special place in our hearts here in Australia. You know, that far-flung European country. Don't get me started. Can we ever win? <laughs> you can. You can win. I feel you had a bit of a honeymoon. Yeah. I feel like the first few years there, you thought, this is easy. <laughs> 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 we enter, everyone votes for us, we do really well, we love it. Now the reality is setting in. Yeah. Now, welcome to our world, Australia. Graham, you've met so many people in your life and your career. Does that help inform your career as an author? Probably not meeting famous people, but I think meeting people. And also, you know what? I think the thing that influences my writing the most is just being older. You know, I think back to who I was in my 20s when I was at university and I was studying English and that's when I, you know, I had, I really wanted to write fiction. But I'm so glad I didn't write novels back then because I think they would have been really different. They'd have been quite cynical and hard-edged and kind of smart-assy. I think age gives you some sort of empathy and it gives you some understanding. Uh, hopefully, anyway, that's the, that's the plan, I think. Frankie is your fifth book. It tells the story of a woman who's always lived on the periphery and, and, and life hasn't always been ideal for her. Where does that story come from? For me, plot is really important. I love plot. And when it came to this book, I suddenly remembered, oh, hang on, uh, the original plot, the plot that we all have, is the story of a life. I started in rural Ireland, but back in the 1940s, and then she ends up in London in the 60s and then in New York in the 70s and 80s. And this book involved research, which I've never really, I mean, I've Googled the odd thing before, but I've never really done research. Uh, and I thought, would I like that? Turned out I did. I love doing the research. Um, I, but I suppose then the, the trick is not to use all of it. You know, sometimes you read a book and you've got to go, yeah, we get it, you did research. Speaking of life experience within your novels, you've had your fair share in real life as well. There was that life or death experience that really tested you. I was uh, a drama student in uh, London. I got mugged and I thought I'd just got mugged. And then as I pushed myself off the ground, I realised I was peeling myself off the ground. And I thought, that's very strange. And I looked down, I was covered in blood and I realised I'd been stabbed. And then there was an old couple uh, standing in a, in a door and I 
I, I remember this is so sweet. It's very kind of like it reminds me of Shakespeare. You know, people got to go. I've been run through, and I also that was because there was no special effects. They had to tell you, but in fact, it is what you say in those instances. So I kind of lifted my shirt, and I kind of went, "I've been stabbed," pointing at a hole in my chest. As she held my hand while I was waiting for the thing, and I was kind of drifting in and out of consciousness. You know, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but it did change the way I approach things. Uh, I became weirdly kind of fearless. And I think it's it's part of the reason why I've ended up doing what I'm doing, because I, it, it you kind of thought, what's the worst that can happen? That. That's the worst that can happen. And it's happened. Graham, can we have you out in Australia soon, please? Yeah. Maybe. I, I, I've always wanted to come. and uh, But now I'm sort of, I am seriously thinking about it. Wait, 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 wait. You've never been to Australia? No, no, I've been to Australia. I have been to Australia. But, like, in 1983. Mate, the place has changed. Well, here's hoping. You'll notice I didn't <laughs> rush back. No, seriously, I am I am genuinely uh, trying to make it happen. All right, what's your lasting memory of your time down under? Bondura. That's when I discovered that <laughs> Neighbours was in fact a searing documentary. OK, I grew up next to Bandura, so be careful. But do tell, what on earth were you doing in Bandura? Oh, I was dating a guy and... Uh, and I went over to Australia to see him. I'd met him in London, obviously. And uh, he went back to Australia. And I was coming to see him. And he was, he'd moved back in with his parents, and, uh, it, who were in Bandura. And he promised me that by the time I got there, he would have moved out of his parents' house. He'd moved out of his parents. He promised, he promised, he promised. And when I got there, he had moved out of his parents' house into the garage. That's my lasting memory of, of Australia, is a garage in Bandura. Thank you. You've lived an extraordinary life, Graham. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a delight. Oh.